Good morning, this is Melissa Whitmer and I'm here with Tim Morrill this morning. Uh, we're going to answer some of the questions that you guys submitted from, uh, from uh, the email list. And thanks so much for signing up. I'm glad that you're interested in the Building the Ultimate Athlete uh, membership site project. Um, and Tim is going to be joining us on this project uh, doing some bi-weekly uh, webinars. Uh, so this is kind of a preview of what that's going to be about. It's going to be your chance to ask questions of Tim. Uh, and uh, and get some great answers from a guy who's got a lot of experience training training athletes. Tim, is there anything else you want to uh, say about yourself? I'm just really excited for the project. I think it's going to be huge for the community. I mean, this sport really, you know, I, I work with a lot of different sports, and when I step back and look at sport, Ultimate is, in my opinion, the most athletic of all sports. So, it, But at the same time, I think a lot of players are kind of uneducated as to what they should be doing in the off season for for a lot of these topics, so um, if we can do our part to give, you know, give good quality information to the ultimate community, then I think at the end of the day, we've um, we've done something of merit in in that we've made a sport more competitive. Yeah, great. Yeah, so we're both really excited about this project, and uh, we're gonna get to your questions right now. So, um, we I got a lot of questions, and I'm really happy about that. But I'm not sure if we're gonna have a chance to answer them all. We're gonna um, go through them and, and see how far we get. So uh, let's see. The first question is from Simone. He plays from uh, he's from John Hopkins University. Plays for Danger Zone. He says this is his first year, uh, fourth year of playing ultimate. I've incorporated some of Tim's agility and jab step and serpentine workouts into my schedule, and it's improved my offense cutting immensely. But for some reason, I still have trouble reacting on defense. I have the speed to be even with most offensive players, but they always beat me on the first step, switching directions and such, which is also ironically my specialty on offense. What specific training regimen and what uh, what do you train when you want to improve defense? Do you work specifically on your core strength to make yourself more able to react better to the offense? Or are there drills that can work on your reaction time? I think this is a great question. So it um, looks like uh, Simone has, uh, has the athleticism to hang with the offense, but having trouble on defense. I think part of this um, is, well, the, the ultimate skill of learning to be not only reactive on defense, but also to be anticipating um, what your what the other team's offense is is trying to do. So you know if you have the athleticism, you have that skill to do those things on offense and change directions quickly on offense. Um, if you can take your defense from being reactive to being proactive, well, that puts you in a little bit more control uh, and and makes you not have to be reactive so much. If you take two players and they have equal ability to change direction, and one is is um, whoever decides to change direction first is going to is going to win, uh, and that's just going to be inevitable if you have two players of equal uh, agility. So if you can, on defense, anticipate when that's going to happen, well then you're no longer uh, having to have that second delay where you're you're waiting for them to change direction. You know when it's going to happen, or you you can kind of guess when it's going to happen, <clears throat> and I think that's really going to help your your defense a lot. So some of it is just um, just just learning to read the other team's offense a little better, learning to anticipate on, on D. But I think Tim also has some other suggestions of how you can uh, prepare yourself to be ready to move in any different direction, no matter what's coming. So do you want to talk about well, that? Well, those, I mean, those are all great points, and I, and I agree. But I think even before we think deep into that, we've got to have the baselines down. And there's, there's two things that are going to dictate movement on the field and how fast and explosive you're going to be. And that's one, how much force are you putting into the ground? So is Simone, is he in the weight room? You know, can, can he squat weight? Is he, is he doing cleans? Um, does he have the leg strength that when he does do a jab step, is he putting a lot of force into the ground? Because the more force he puts in, the more it's going to shoot him in that other direction, the more he's not going to get beat. Um, so strength and power. Uh, and then the other piece would just be grooving all the patterns that we can do out of an athletic position. So can I show? Yeah, yeah, some why of those? Don't you go ahead and do that. So if we can get the, the camera. So I need to know if, if I'm playing defense, like I see it a lot of times, like if, if I'm here and the stack's in front of me, then people will kind of be back on their heels, their toes will be out, they'll be in all these weird positions. We've got to know, we've got to be in a position that I can do anything. So from here, if my weight is a little bit on my toes and towards inside of my foot, then that's going to make my knees come in. And what this does is if I want to go this way or this way, all I have to do, rather than wasting time rocking back and finding that position, I'm already here. All I have to do is apply force and boom, I'm shuffling that way, I'm shuffling that way. So I need to practice that. 
And then also, from this position, I need to know how to back pedal efficiently. I also need to know if I want to go in a straight line, how am I going to split and get out and do a false step start. And then I also have to have, to have the pattern grooved of if my man decides to go that way, I'm going to do a, a lean kind of an outside foot push under crossover um, start. So if I can practice all those moves and do drills where I'm like, okay, false step start, find my athletic position, back pedal, find my athletic position, always being able to do all these transitional movements and then come back to this position because anything can happen from this position. Okay, so that, that's, um, that's great. I also think um, one of your questions is, uh, are there drills that you can do to work on your reaction time? And I think the answer to that is, is yes. You, in addition to doing these agility drills, uh, you do want to incorporate that reactive component into some of your drills. So some ways you can do that is, um, is with another player, you know, mirroring their movements. So um, I think, actually you have a YouTube video of, uh, I think it's Brody and... Uh, the, Brook. the Brook, Brody and Brooke doing a um, kind of a, a serpentine where where one player doesn't change direction until the person in the lead does, and so that's something that um, you can do to, to work on your reaction time, reading another player's movements, um, and uh, and working on. You know what's what's a great drill that what I was just doing there that athletic position set up somebody in that athletic position with it, a cone on one side, on the other side, and on the back, so they're kind of in the middle of a square, and then somebody on the other side doing the same thing. Right, so um, it so if I'm in that athletic position and I kind of backpedal to the far back cone, um, the other guy has to do it. And then we have to both go back to the middle and reclaim that athletic position with our toes in and be ready to react. It's a great way to do it. Yeah, excellent.